All right, that's the background to our story now. We have joining us on Skype a visiting professor at the Policy Institute, King's College, London, Andrew Magliot. Andrew, good morning. It's good to have you on right now. Good morning. Pleasure to be here. Yes. Uh, in, less than, in less than 24 hours, uh, the, the British people were going, to, going into elections. But in about three months, we've had about three attacks in London. How, just how overwhelmed is the security agency or apparatus in London? Well, two attacks in London, one in Manchester. And, and I wouldn't say the security apparatus is overwhelmed at all. Um, the day after each attack, life has gone on as normal in uh, London and indeed in Manchester. And the people of London and Manchester have come together in complete defiance of the terrorists to say, we're not going to be scared, we're not going to hide, and we're going to go on with life as normal. All right. It's only natural now that the party will have to adjust their manifesto to suit the security situation now. And uh, those who are adjusting for the, the prime minister position. And the conservative is looking at online security, wanting to uh, make sure that uh, companies now allow access to information. Uh, the liberals are saying cybersecurity charter for company is the way forward and uh, uh, that's the Labour Party rather but the Liberals are against it completely what is your take on the issue of online security and the party manifestos online security is part of the multi-layered defense that we need to have against terrorism and I say to people look at online security and look at social media in the same way that we look at uh, pedophilia and child pornography we must crack down on child pornography and pedophilia online and in the same way we must crack down on terrorism and we must crack down on those who inspire motivate and recruit terrorists via online means because really there are three levels of security there is level one which is don't allow the circumstances to be created in which terrorism can thrive level two identify the individuals who might be susceptible or who are becoming susceptible to terrorism and level three a security response once someone has decided to attack and stop them from undertaking their attack the whole issue about social media and cyber security comes into level two if there are people who are susceptible to being recruited into terrorism we must find them and we must stop that recruitment into terrorism and social media and online chat rooms are one of the avenues by which the extremists recruit their vulnerable people. All right, Andrew, uh, elections are coming very soon and uh, uh, people will be moving all around. What impact will this, uh, will the recent attacks have on the, the, the uh, freedom of people to come out or the even apathy in the, uh, on one hand? I think um, the way the British people respond to attacks, this is probably likely to increase turnout at the election. I think the British people collectively want to say to the terrorists, we're not scared by you, we're not worried by you, we're not going to cower and hide in our homes and, and refuse to undertake our democratic right to vote. I suspect that more people will go out and the voter turnout will go up because people in this country will not be scared by terrorism. Remember, Britain has a long history of terrorism, going right back to the days of the IRA. The British people will not stand for thugs and bullies trying to stop them from undertaking their democratic rights. Let's look at resources to the, the police now and the security apparatus. Uh, Theresa May has been blamed from, for slashing their, their budget, though he's promised, she's promised to increase it if the party comes on board to, uh, from 11 uh, pound, billion pounds to about 15 in 2020. Will that help her case? Well, it, it's absolutely right, factually, to say that she cut some of the funding to the police and security forces. That's true. It's also true to say police and security forces are asking for more. And if we go back to those three stages of defence I talk about, to detect terrorism before it takes place, you need to have a very strong intelligence and surveillance mechanism, and you need to have very positive relations with moderate and real Muslims within our community for people to report. Now, in each of the last three attacks, Manchester, Westminster Bridge and London Bridge, at least one of the attackers in each of those attacks had been known to police, had been reported to police via the moderate Muslim community, via the uh, terrorism hotlines, and the police just did not have the resources to be able to monitor everyone, and these people slipped through the net. I mean, one of the terrorists in the London Bridge attack had been... Uh, detected in Italy on his way to Syria and the Italians warned the British but the British didn't have the resources to be able to uh, fully monitor everyone they needed to monitor. 
So it's absolutely right that the British police and security forces need more funding. And it is right to say that security, uh, that Theresa May had cut security funding as her time as Home Secretary. And whomever wins the election needs to increase the amount of resources going into the security intelligence services to meet their needs. All right, Andrew, before I let you go, what issues will be driving the voting patterns in 24 hours? You know, I think this is probably one of the most confusing elections that Britain has faced in many years. For a lot of people, Brexit, the vote for Britain to leave the European Union, is a big issue. For some, security is a big issue. But then there are lots of the bread and butter and nuts and bolts issues about employment, about government austerity post-financial crisis, about uh, what is the economic model for the UK after it leaves the EU? How is funding to the National Health Service going? How's funding to education going? So there's a lot of normal issues that you have across the British electorate at the moment. And then you put on top of that terrorism, you put on top of that the Brexit vote. So I think this is a very, very difficult election to predict. OK, finally now, let's look at each of the candidates now. The top contenders now is uh, between uh, the Conservative and, and, and the Liberal Party. The Liberals are also pulling their weight. Who do you think will carry the day? Well, I think that Theresa May will still get over the line. I think she'll probably have a slightly reduced majority, but still have a majority. There is an outside chance that she'll have a hung parliament and need to negotiate uh, some degree of coalition um, with other, other parties. There is a very small chance that the Labor Party might be able to cobble together a coalition with the Scottish National Party and the Liberal Democrats. It is possible, but unlikely. You've seen in this last week that the swing back to the Labor Party has kind of peaked in the polling. And I suspect that you're going to have a slightly reduced majority to Theresa May, but a return of the Conservative government. Okay. Professor Andrew McLeod, uh, professor at the or visiting professor at the Policy Institute, King's College, London. Thank you for talking to us on TV. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.